Welcome back to HN What's Your Say? The number one listening show where we dig deep into some of the most controversial stories of our time. We're still exploring the case against R. Kelly, one of the most celebrated figures in modern music history and arguably the best songwriter from the 90s. While his enemies wish we would see him as a convicted criminal, those who have been following the case closely should have noticed that systemic injustices and societal biases have played a significant role in how his story has unfolded. Robert Sylvester Kelly better known as R. Kelly rose to fame as the king of R&B at an early age in the early 90s. From chart-topping hits like I Believe I Can Fly to his undeniable influence on music, Kelly was a cultural icon and quickly became a household name. However with fame came women who were ready to do anything to get a piece of his wealth and share in his fame, and before long came allegations of sexual misconduct that have since followed him for decades. These multiple allegations eventually culminated into criminal trials that saw him convicted in what appeared to be kangaroo courts which had already decided his fate before the trials commenced. Looking at the way the courts prejudiced him, it was no shocker that they proceeded to wrongfully convict him. And as if this was not enough, He was then slapped with an exaggerated 30-year prison sentence that is intended to see him die in prison considering he is currently 57 years old. It's common knowledge that our justice system disproportionately targets black men, and most especially those in positions of power likely as a way of regulating black influence in matters of national governance and decision-making. The history of this country has an overflow of examples where black celebrities have faced harsher public backlash and legal repercussions compared to their white counterparts accused of similar crimes. It is also written in an open book that the laws of this country were seemingly cut out to allow the government power to remove anyone they deemed unfit to live from the free world and lock them up for as long as necessary as a silencing strategy. And sadly these loopholes in the law are being used to target and lock up black people whenever they please, leaving behind an unleveled playing arena that disadvantages the black populace. In fact the idea of the American dream for black people no longer exists in this country for one no longer be sure that whatever they work hard for will not be taken away from them in an instance. It appears that the laws of this land can be twisted any time and intentionally misinterpreted if the government is out to catch some black folks and lock them up to die in prison. It appears when you happen to be black in this country, The government allows you to work so hard and accumulate so much wealth over decades while you pay the heavy taxes, and once you get older with diminishing economic value, the same government works out a plan of how to take everything you have worked for from you so that you do not get to pass it down to the next generation. The system is designed to prevent the idea that wealth in black families can be generational, likely because this is the greatest threat to white sovereignty. They do not have a problem with black people making money and living lavish lifestyles because the system gains in taxes, but when it comes to passing down this wealth to the next generation, the federal government suddenly has a problem with your conduct. They will make sure to distribute all your money to multiple beneficiaries that have not invested any sweat in making which guarantees everything goes to waste. Studies have consistently shown that black defendants often receive harsher sentences than white defendants for similar crimes. And also the media's portrayal of black men often leans into negative stereotypes, painting them as predators more readily than their white peers. The system will make sure to destroy your career beyond repair in a way that makes it difficult to revive it even if you luckily escape their legal trap. There is no doubt that this racial bias has contributed so much to R. Kelly's ordeals and is likely the core reason R. Kelly is currently locked up in a four-walled prison cell. The racist system painted him as a villain in the court of public opinion long before his trial even began as preparation for the destruction that was coming next. The looming question with regard to the strategic timing of these allegations is that if R. Kelly was committing these said crimes decades ago, why was there no accountability earlier? The usual pattern is the government allows you to flourish and targets you towards your old age because it's your inheritance they are after and not the crimes. In fact they don't really want your money, They just don't want it passed down to your children because historical records have shown that power families can dictate the direction of national politics, and more powerful black families could mean black sovereignty in the future which is a threat to white supremacy. This seemingly well-timed approach to litigation complicates the narrative. To understand today's racial disparities, we need to look at the roots of the problem. The mass incarceration of black Americans didn't begin yesterday. It's deeply intertwined with the history of slavery, Jim Crow laws, and systemic racism. 
After the abolition of slavery, black people in the U.S. were criminalized through black codes, which restricted their freedom, and that were used as a tool to maintain economic exploitation and social control. The convict lease system essentially re-enslaved many black Americans under the guise of criminal justice. Fast forward to the 20th century and we see this pattern continuing through segregation, redlining and discriminatory policing practices. The so-called war on drugs of the 1980s and 1990s only exacerbated the issue disproportionately targeting black communities despite similar rates of drug use among white populations. Let's look at the data. The United States has the highest incarceration rate in the world and black Americans are incarcerated at nearly five times the rate of white Americans. While black people make up about only 13% of the U.S. population, they account for a staggering 33% of the prison population. These disparities aren't just coincidental. They are symptoms of a deeply flawed system whose agenda is to lock up as many black folk as they possibly can. The disparities start with policing. Black neighborhoods are often over-policed leading to higher arrest rates for even minor infractions. For example studies have shown that black drivers are more likely to be stopped by police and searched, even though white drivers are statistically more likely to be found with contraband. These disproportionate interactions funnel more black people into the criminal justice system. Take for instance the case of Eric Garner who was killed during an arrest for allegedly selling loose cigarettes. Or Khalif Browder, a teenager who spent three years in jail, two of them in solitary confinement without ever being convicted of a crime simply because he couldn't afford bail. These stories are not isolated incidents. They're part of a larger pattern. But the disparities don't stop at arrests. Black Americans also face harsher sentencing than their white counterparts. According to the U.S. Sentencing Commission, black men receive sentences that are on average 20% longer than white men for the same crimes. And mandatory minimum sentencing laws have disproportionately impacted black communities especially for drug-related offenses. With this in mind, it's no wonder that R. Kelly received a whooping 30 years jail term for crimes that fell short of evidence to prove he even committed them. It was disheartening to hear an appeal judge from the Chicago Appeal hearing advise attorney Jennifer Bonjean to simply agree to the overly long 30-year sentence because if the case was retried, there is a high chance he could get a longer sentence even though she knew well that the purpose of the appeal is to remedy whatever situation already existed. But she probably said this because she knows that the system is purposed to lock them up and to keep them longer. If you wish to take part in a live interview on this channel discussing any of these topics, let us know by emailing us on sashahnnewsroom at gmail.com for scheduling. That is all we had for you today on HN What's Your Say? To keep updated whenever we post a new video, subscribe to this channel now. Also remember to hit the bell icon and enable notifications. And feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment section below, and let us know if you would like us to publish your views in our next release. We value all our subscribers' opinions.